Hi, Matt. Thanks for coming. Glad to be here. Tell me about Alpha Protocol and your role and what the focus of your design position on that team was. Alpha Protocol is a, uh, it's an action RPG espionage role playing game. Uh, it's uh, published by Sega. It's going to be out June 1st. Um, you take the role of a super spy and save the world. Uh, my role in the game was I was the, uh, the lead systems designer. So I was in charge of things like uh, the combat system, stealth, RPG mechanics, the game's economy, all that sort of number-based stuff and balancing and, and just making sure that um, you know, all, all the gameplay mechanics felt good and scaled well as you played through the game. So you had your hat in a lot of different areas of game design, mm -hmm. but your talk today focused on the challenge. What is it about the challenge of the player that they think is so fundamental to game design? I kind of became obsessed with uh, challenges as a concept because uh, near the end of the development of Elf Protocol, uh, I think we had all sort of lost sense of, of how challenging the game was. We all thought the game was really, really easy. Uh, I had my own little phobias that, you know, I'm going to release a game that, you know, no one's going to be challenged by it. But really it was a matter of us losing perspective, and it kind of made me, you know, rethink, you know, how, how do I figure out if, if my game is challenging or not? And also what kind of challenge should I be delivering to the player? Because I think that was a, that's a philosophical question that every game has to answer uh, for itself. But you know, I think that games are more popular these days, um, not just because the graphics are better, not just because it's easier to get them on your iPhone, but because they're, they're more accessible and they, they keep good challenge design elements in mind when they're made. So when you say challenge, what exactly do you mean in a game experience? Challenge is the, uh, is the obstacles that the game th throws at you. It's the, um, uh, without challenge, a game's just kind of like a, a bad interactive movie like you might play on a 3DO. 20 years ago. Uh, challenge is that part of the game that uh, the player initially struggles with, but it forces the player to learn and adapt and then get a sense of accomplishment when they've overcome it. Um, and I think that both casual and hardcore gamers alike crave challenge. Um, they want to be tested. Uh, they want to even fail a couple times so that they can enjoy the end conclusion of the game. Um, and I think one of my big arguments at the, at the presentation was that casual gamers do want to be challenged, they just don't want to be frustrated. And so good challenge design is really good frustration design. What is it that makes you want to give back to the program, especially coming up here and doing that? Well, um, I'm kind of obsessed with games when I'm not playing them or making them, I'm thinking about them. I've benefited from a lot of other developers uh, who've shared their knowledge. Um, I, I have really great coworkers who are very good mentor figures to me. And I've, I've had the, the, um, the luxury of going to things like GDC and, 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 and hearing other people talk. And um, I, I just sort of feel like I, I really appreciate the um, the collaborative nature of, of game design. It feels like um, developers are, are interested in sharing their secrets. They, you know, we all have to observe our non-disclosure agreements, uh, but we're happy to, when a game is done, tell other people, you know, here's what, here's a mistake we made, here's a solution we tried, we're really proud of the solution, maybe you can make solution B. Um, and so I, I like talking about games and I, I want to talk about it to other people, um, partly so I can inspire them. Like. Um, I would love it if, if you know, someone played a game of mine and they liked it, but also hated it in a little bit, a little, little way over here, so that they liked the game, but they wanted to improve upon the part that they hated, so they make another game that's kind of similar to it. I'd love that, because then I could play it, and it would be a new and exciting thing for me. So I really want to inspire people. And also, I think um, there's just only so much uh, I can improve my own knowledge um, by not having outside voices criticize me. So I like to put my ideas out there and listen to people tell me I'm wrong so I can adjust my, my knowledge. What would be that one piece of advice you would give to somebody that wants to get into the industry and you know, wants to do what you do? To actually just you know, have a little do-it-yourself initiative and make a mod and then say, you know, here's what I can do. Um, we're lucky to have uh, hired a, a designer, Jorge, who is a, a Skiro. He made a really great mod for Oblivion, uh, one that I played myself. So when he sent his application over, I'm like, the guy who made that Oblivion mod? Yeah. You know, he had actually shown that he has the chops. He had never had a professional uh, game design job before, but man, what an introduction. Like a completed mod, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for doing this and for thank being you. a part of the Game Design Expo. It was a great time.